Okay, let's talk about homeschool and specifically high school mathematics. So this uh, video is directed towards those of you that are homeschooling a child at the high school level or if you plan on homeschooling one or more children at the high school level. We're going to be talking about what you need to know about mathematics and how to build a successful homeschool math program for your child that's going to be at that high school level. So I'm going to talk about four specific things that you want to keep in mind um, as you kind of plan your future and your child's future because homeschooling is awesome, but you got to have a plan because if you start school, you know, homeschooling and you don't have a plan, then that's when things can get kind of difficult. But uh, anyways, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also the founder of tabletclass.com. I have been teaching math, uh, middle and high school mathematics for decades. I, it's really my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I've been working with homeschoolers for a good 15 plus years with my homeschool program. You can find that, uh, you can just follow the links in the description below. I'm going to leave links to both of my websites, tcmathacademy.com and tabletclass.com. Tablet class is my full homeschool program for middle and high school mathematics. I basically teach pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Pre-Calculus. And I've, again, I've been working with homeschoolers for a good 15 plus years. So I have a lot of insight on this subject, uh, not only you know, uh, having been a public school uh, teacher, but also working with homeschoolers for many, many years, and of course, being a parent myself. So we're going to be talking about four factors that you want to keep in mind so you can have a successful homeschool experience. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. So the first thing that you want to keep in mind, of course, is the goals, right? So more importantly, not uh, so much what is your goals, is what is your child's goals, okay? In other words, do they want to uh, go to college, do they want to get into engineering, or do they just want to kind of graduate high school and go into uh, trade school? So this counts because, you, you know, it's not necessary for your child to, let's say, take pre-calculus or calculus. That's not that important, okay? So... Uh, when you know your child's kind of like their career goals, you can kind of reverse engineer that because if they're trying to get into MIT or some sort of top college, then you're really going to have to, you know, um, have a very intense math program. But if they're just looking to kind of, you know, complete high school and go into a trade school, you still want them, you know, you still want to have a good solid math education for them, but you need to start with what your child's goals are. Now, if they don't, if they're not quite sure what they uh, want to do, i.e., well, they're not, I don't know if I want to go to college or not. I want to suggest to you that you keep college as an option. Okay, so in other words, don't say, well, they're probably not going to go to college because they could definitely change their mind. So at a minimum, of course, you have a minimum requirement for your high school uh, graduation requirements for your particular states. But uh, we're basically talking about Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. So these are the three kind of core courses that you want to get uh, into. But I'm going to suggest that if your child's, you know, if you're not sure whether your child is going to be going to uh college or not, even consider pre-calculus as a senior as well, or maybe like a statistics course. But uh, again, these courses here should be the minimum uh, courses. And if your child gets through Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 successfully, and by the way, this should be the order of um, uh, how they take these courses. Don't do Algebra 1 and then Algebra 2, then Geometry. Always do it in this particular order. If you want to know more about that, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that uh, talk about this, and you go to my tablet class uh, website. I believe we have a couple blog posts on this, but anyways, you want to do things in this order, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. But uh, anyways, these are the minimum level courses, but if your child gets through these three courses successfully, they'll be ready for college, right? Uh, you know, they may not be taking calculus, but after Algebra 2, they can try to place into maybe like, um, well, the appropriate course at a community college would be like college algebra, but they would be able to get into some sort of college with these three uh, courses at a minimum. But again, 
you know, if your child is good at math, but even if they're saying, well, I'm not sure if I want to go to college or not, I would uh, kind of push them or challenge them to uh, try pre-calculus, okay? Because if they can get through that course, then they're going to be really, really prepared for any college um, program that they get into, including like STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, because if you can complete pre-calculus, then the next course after that would be calculus. Of course, that would be a course that you need to take for technical majors. But again, have some sort of basic sense of uh, you know what your child wants to do. It's not critical for every single student to take pre-calculus. Um, again, but if your child's good at math, you know, always try to get fit in more math than uh, if possible, okay, in their high school uh, years, because you just never know. They might change their mind, and they may want to go to college. All right, let's talk about the second thing, and that is learning style, okay? So how does your child like to learn? Now, uh, you know, some of your, um, your children out there, you know, I'm speaking to, you, of course, a lot of people on the other side of this video, your child, your children are going to, you know, vary dramatically. You can have three kids and they can learn, each one of them could be completely different. One could be very independent, another person, another child, you know, you're going to have to really watch and maybe another child likes to learn kind of maybe in a school setting. So we are talking about homeschooling here. So there's all sorts of variations of homeschooling. You could be part of a co-op. You can be part of a, like an online school. You can use independent uh, programs. So you want to have some sort of sense of how your child you know, learns best. But here's um, one thing that you have to be very, very careful with. And if you, don't, if you get one thing out of this video, this is the, probably the, uh, the most important. And that is this. If you're trying to figure out how to homeschool your child, what the natural thing to do is to start reading, you know, uh, blogs, let's say, you know, homeschool blogs, homeschool articles, and you start reading about other people's experiences. And you're going to get a lot of recommendations out there. You have to be very, very careful with all these recommendations. Uh, you're going to hear parents say, my child was successful with this. Or maybe you have a, uh, a friend that homeschools as well. And you say, well, my child, you know, uh, is great with this program. And even though you might think that, your child is like their child. In other words, if uh, you know if you use the program that your friend used or you're reading about that, you're going to be successful. And that's not that's not always the case. So you're going to have to really think independently here. And you know, you, of course, you can read about particular programs and how people um, you know done with them, how uh, you know students and and families have done with particular homeschool programs. But you have to ultimately kind of think for yourself and don't put too much weight on reviews and recommendations, okay? Kind of observe your child and, 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 and try to come up with your own independent decision, right? Hey, is this really going to work with my child? And you should test programs out, okay? Just because your child says, hey, I like, um, you know, I like learning independently. I like reading a textbook. I like video-based programs. You know, maybe try a few programs. Don't get too fully committed. See how they're doing and don't be um, afraid to change course. Okay, so this is really, really important. So you want to try to match, again, how your child learns best with a solid program. All right, now we are talking about high school mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, there is a ton of information to know at uh, the high school you know, level um, in terms of high school level mathematics. Matter of fact, to be a high school math teacher in uh, most states, generally speaking, it requires a degree in mathematics or a, a math education uh, degree. So I actually have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree. That's a lot of mathematics, okay? I've taken a lot of advanced math and high school level mathematics can get quite advanced, all right? So that's why you need to know who is your child's teacher. Now, just because your child might, you know, like to learn independently, I'm going to strongly suggest that your child have some sort of teacher. Now, that could be like a video-based program, some sort of live classroom, something like that. But you want to have a teacher involved in your child's education, just not teaching, just not material, i.e., you're not going to say, okay, here is a book, here are some worksheets, go ahead and learn. That's not going to be good enough. So, again, you want to have that teacher uh, support, that instructional component. And you, you need to ask, who is your ch uh, child's teacher? Okay, what is the, you know, what's the qualifications? How many years of experience? And does your child like their teaching style? Can your, you know, child learn from them? And more and uh, probably uh, uh, just as important um, or just as importantly 
is how comprehensive is the curriculum, right? Is the teacher kind of explaining things on a more basic level or are they really, you know, teaching at a very comprehensive level? Again, this kind of goes into the goals, right? So if you're saying to yourself, well, you know, I just want to get my child through high school and then that's enough. Well, then maybe you can use a basic, you know, a program where, you know, maybe it's not too uh, challenging and too difficult for your child. That's perfectly fine. But I'm going to strongly suggest that you err on the side of, of having your child getting the best math education as possible. Okay, so they need to be challenged and you need a great teacher involved. So a good way to kind of test this is like, you know, when you're trying different programs is to check out like free previews or free trials. In my uh, particular uh, program, I have a ton of free previews. So in other words, you can go to my courses and your child can watch a lot of different lessons from me for free and they can kind of get a real good sense whether they like my teaching style or not. But you need to really evaluate who is teaching my child when it comes to education, in terms of the most important factor in education, and we're talking about uh, all subjects, not just math, is who are you learning from? Who is the teacher? That trumps what uh, material you're using. Material is important. In other words, how many workbooks, worksheets, all that kind of stuff. Is there great software support? All that pales in comparison to who is delivering the instruction. So put a lot of weight on this. Now let's talk about this last factor. And that is work, okay? Now, I'm talking about you, the parent. How much work do you want to do, right? Do you want to kind of be hands-off? Uh, if you uh, don't want to do too much work, well, I'm going to strongly suggest that you do not try to be uh, your child's teacher. Now, a lot of you may not like to hear that. Now, you could be your child's uh, mentor, your child's tutor. Now, I mean, my mentor, of course, you're a parent. You still have to be the, <laughs> the parent. But... Uh, it doesn't really work out well, in my experience, when you become your child's teacher at the at the kind of the high school level. All right. Now, at the elementary level, it's a different deal because, you know, your child's younger and they're probably more receptive to you. But I, you know, as, as a parent myself, when your child becomes a teenager, they're kind of looking for, you know, to see how many you know ways can they escape uh, listening to their parents. Now, let's just be honest. Right. That's from most people's experience. Yours, your, you may be the exception. To it. But as a general rule, you know, as a teenager, you're you're going to be your child's going to be better off learning from someone else. And I'm talking about uh, those of you out there that have engineering degrees or maybe are math teachers myself, even myself as a math teacher, my own son. He preferred to uh, listen to someone else because, you know, he listens to me. Hey, do this, do that and everything else. Listen. So. When it comes to this, don't take it personal, all right? Uh, but at, when your child reaches that high school level, start thinking about outsourcing, you know, that teaching role to someone else, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that you can't be involved. As a matter of fact, the more you're involved, the better off you're going to be. But here's how I would suggest you can be involved. So there's a couple different ways you can approach this. Uh, one, um, well, first of all, I'm going to say this at a minimum, if you're homeschooling, you need to be involved at a, at a, a level, uh, probably more so than let's say a parent of um, a public school, uh, child. Okay. So here's a couple, um, things that you need to be doing no matter what one, you get, you have to be checking in on your child, make sure that they're doing the work, whatever program they're using. All right. So that's just kind of obvious common sense stuff, but I want to suggest that you can, if you're motivated enough, if you uh, want to kind of get more involved, you could be kind of like a tutor, right? You can actually almost kind of take the course along with your child, be learning. So if they get in trouble or if they're confused with a particular you know, problem or topic, that you can work through you know, any misunderstandings or confusion together. That's a far better um uh, kind of uh, approach than you saying, okay, I'm going to teach you. So let's sit down and you could basically uh, learn from the teacher and then you become the teacher yourself. You don't want to, you don't want to do that. Okay. But you guys can be learning you and your child that is can be learning together and then kind of sorting through any difficulties when they arise. It's a much, much better uh, uh, approach. And a couple of other things are just common sense. Um, and hopefully you already know these things, but if you're new to homeschooling, you may not be, you know, fully aware. Some of the most important factors to be successful in learning uh, mathematics, whether you're homeschool or not, is kind of study habits, right? Does your child take notes? Are they neat? Are they organized? Are they doing all the work? Okay. 
In other words, are they doing all the practice problems, all the homework? And you could just easily check in and audit them. In other words, you want to get, provide your child with some sort of basic accountability. Okay, that's really, really important. So you're busy enough as a parent with everything else that's going on. Uh, so again, if you're considering programs where you have to basically develop lesson plans and everything else like that. That's just way too much work. And quite frankly, unless you're an experienced math teacher, you have a degree in math and many, many years teaching high school level math, it's just, you know, you you don't want to, um, you know, uh, take any chances, right? Give your, give your child the best uh, chances of success by, you know, connecting them with an excellent teacher, okay? And then obviously combined with a good program that fits their learning styles, that's in alignment with their goals. And uh, anyways, I think I'm gonna go and wrap it up right here. But the mo- I guess the, the main thing that I wanna um, make sure you understand is that you, when you choose to homeschool, you really are choosing uh, you know, to navigate this, you know, you have so many now new options to you versus then, you know, putting your child in your local, you know, public school or private school. So you got to be ready for it, right? And it's so easy, you know, for all of us to go online and review uh, reviews about products or different things. You got to be so, so careful with that. Do the research, think on your own, test things out. And hopefully uh, this video will help kind of focus, you know, your, um, what you're considering when you're picking a homeschool math program for your child. But here is the bottom, bottom line. If something's not working, don't stick with the bad program. There's just the cost are too much. So when you're looking at your child's education, they have their freshman year, the sophomore year, their junior year, and then of course their senior year. You can't, you know, just say, well, I hope this program works out. You know, they're struggling in their freshman year, you're doing all the right things, but they're still not finding success. The worst thing you can do is just stick with the program that's not working, okay? And you might be saying to yourself, well, I heard so many good things about this program. It should be working, it should be working. Listen, at the end of the day, if your child's doing all the right things and you're doing all the right things, but this program's just not producing the results that you want for you and your child, then you have to make a change because time is clicking. So I'm gonna leave you with that final thought. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now that I, I have seen so many impressive homeschooling um, families out there and uh, success stories. So if you're new to homeschooling, you're concerned about, wow, is this going to work? Do not give up because you absolutely can be successful in homeschooling. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your homeschooling adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.